We've taken some diet tonic water and placed it into this ultrasonic cleaner by Life Basis. Watch what happens when we turn on the ultrasound. Isn't that cool? The ultrasound causes carbon dioxide to escape the tonic water, and this creates a fountain. Let's try doing the same thing again, but this time we'll use seltzer water. Wow, the ultrasound causes these two sodas to behave really differently. Let's see if we can figure out what causes the difference. By the way, the experiments in this video were done using an ultrasound cleaner by Life Basis. If you want to use one to do your own experiments with ultrasound, check out the link in the video description. The differences we see could be due to the fact that seltzer water just contains carbon dioxide and water, but the diet tonic water contains additional ingredients dissolved into the soda. Let's try the seltzer water again, but this time we'll add a few drops of alcohol first. By doing this, we can test this go. idea that dissolved substances cause the fountain to go a little bit higher. Hey, I think it worked a little bit better than the seltzer water alone. Let's wash the two side by side just to be sure. Sure enough, addition of a little bit of alcohol to the seltzer water caused a little bit better fountain. To explore a little further, let's get a close-up of what's going on when these sodas are placed in the ultrasound. First, we'll try the seltzer water. Hey, that looks kind of cool. The ultrasound makes a whole bunch of bubbles in the seltzer water. All right, now let's try the diet tonic water. Remember, this has a bunch of extra dissolved ingredients. Oh man, what a beautiful difference. It's like tiny explosions are happening in the tonic water. In fact, some researchers have actually used the term nanobomb to describe these sites where carbon dioxide begins its escape from the beverage. When we view the bubble formation in the tonic water alongside that of the seltzer water, we see the bubbles in the tonic water are a lot smaller. And these smaller bubbles support higher fountains for two reasons. First, it's tough for liquid to get trapped between larger bubbles, and this doesn't allow for the formation of stable foams. On the other hand, smaller bubbles do allow for this effect, and more stable foams can support higher fountains. Second, smaller bubbles have greater surface area contact with the surrounding fluid. This greater surface area allows for faster carbon dioxide escape and higher fountains. But how does the fact that extra dissolved ingredients help make higher fountains fit into all of this? Well, it's known in pure water that bubbles can easily coalesce to form larger bubbles. But this effect gets inhibited by the presence of dissolved solids. Because of this, bubbles that form in seltzer water with no dissolved solids coalesce and dissipate quickly. On the other hand, bubbles that form in tonic water with a lot of dissolved solids are tiny and persist, forming a foam. This bubble foaming effect is also seen in ocean water, which of course contains a lot of dissolved salt. If you'd like to learn more about how either ultrasound or dissolved solids affects degassing in carbonated beverages, check out these two articles. Or better yet, buy your own ultrasound cleaner and do some experiments for yourself.